Hi and welcome to another episode of PeaceMeg TV. In today's WordPress tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at a plugin that enhances the admin and allows you to customize the interface slightly to give you more information on your pages, your posts, your media uploads, etc. There are two versions of this plugin. One's free, and that's the one we're going to take a look at today. And there's a commercial option which enhances it even further. So let's take a look at how we can use that now. I'm in the Add Plugins section of my WordPress installation. And what we're going to do is we're going to search for the plugin that I want to use. So we'll go to the top right, say Search Plugins, and we're going to look for Admin Columns. Like I say, there are two versions that's available. There's the free version, which we're going to concentrate on, and the Admin Columns Pro, which is the paid for version. So if we take a look at it, we'll just have a look at more details. And we'll see some of the things that it actually allows us to do. Now, this hasn't been tested with the latest version of WordPress, but I've installed it and everything works fine. Obviously, this is something you need to decide yourself if you want to install this on a live environment. So you can see if we switch over to the screenshots, it'll show you an example of the interface and how you can customize it and some of the things that it'll do. If you want, read the description just to ensure that it does everything you'd want it to. And if not, you need something else, then I'd recommend taking a look at the commercial version. But I'm going to hit install now. I'm going to let that download, install to my version of WordPress. And once we've done that, we're ready to activate it and start taking a look at how we can actually use it. The next step is to simply activate the plugin and then we can take a look at what it'll do. Okay, so it's now activated and we can see that it's in the plugin section. So we know it's available to us. So we can hit settings from this section or we can simply come down to the settings menu on the left hand side and choose admin columns. So let's just do that. And you can see this gives us a pretty simple interface. If we take a look at the top, we can choose the kind of post types we want to work with, whether that's posts, pages, grid builder, or pricing table. Now, obviously, you'll see different options based upon the theme and the plugins you have, but you will see posts and pages. We can also control the information that's displayed in the users, the media library, and the comments sections. And at the moment, we're looking at the post section. So you can see that the typical post layout will show us the title, the author, the categories, the tags, the comments, and the date. So from this point, we could actually reorder those if we wanted to by grabbing the little re re sort of move handle on the left-hand side. So we could say, actually, we'd like to have the date next to the title. We can turn any of these off. We could remove it. We can edit the information. We can come to the drop-down list on the right-hand side, and we can adjust the label and the type, the width of the column, we can specify it's going to be a pixel value or a percentage value, or we can set it to be auto. You know, we've got a couple of different options available to us just to customize what's already in there. But where the power of this plugin really comes in is the ability to add extra columns in there and take out ones that we don't use. So let's just say, for example, that you've got a website and you know, have no intention of using comments in your posts or your pages. Well, having this available to you in your admin section is completely redundant. So all we need to do is click remove, that's gone, and we're good to go. So now we've got rid of that, we just need to hit save posts or pages or whatever it is you're actually doing. So we'll store these settings, so we'll hit save, that'll refresh, and now if we just quickly go to posts, I'll hold the control or the command key down on your keyboard, hit all posts so we can open up a new tab, and we can see now that the comment section has gone. And we could do the same for tags if we want to. We can do it this way. We can actually come to edit columns in the particular section we want. And that'll allow us to edit the settings from there. So you can see it brings us back into this section. We can say, well, we don't want tags. I don't use them. We'll hit remove, update. Once we've done that, we can just click view. That'll take us over, show us the listings, and you can see now we've slimmed down the information that's on there. So that's how easy it is to actually remove different columns that are available to you in the admin section. But let's take a look at now how we can add our columns in there so we can customize the layout of this to get a more informative and we can tweak it to the way that we want it. So let's just switch back over to the admin column section again and I'll refresh this page just to make sure they look at the latest version. And what we're going to do is, well, I don't care about the author because I'm the only person that actually writes anything on here. So I'm going to remove that, update, so I'm left now with title, categories, and date. So what I can do is I can click Add Column, 
and that allows us to choose a couple of basic looking options. Now even though it looks basic, it's still pretty powerful what we can do here. So we can say, what type of column do we want? Well, we can expand that down. You can see we've got a whole host of different types of columns that are available to us. So if we wanted to put the comments back in, we could easily do that. If we wanted to add something different in, like a custom field, or we wanted to put custom actions, attachments, before more tag, etc. You know, we've got a huge array of things that we can do on this particular section. So let's start by adding another column in there. So let's say, for example, that we are working with a site and I want to make sure that I've got a minimum number of characters or word count on any page. So I want to make sure that I'm not falling below a minimum. But what I can do is I can just come to here, choose the type, I can scroll down and we can the options we've got is word count. So we can click on that. If I want to give it a custom title, I can do that. If I'm happy to sort of say I'll use a percentage to auto fit, or if I want to be specific, I can say, well, I want a pixel value. And then I can just scroll that up and say that this needs to be 60 pixels wide. You know, entirely have you, you do this. Hit add column. Oops, sorry. And we'll come down and we'll say, let's take something else. Let's just take a look if it's got any attachments to it. So we'll say, yep, yeah, we'll use that. And we'll just say, we'll have a thumbnail. So if there's any attachments on there, it'll show them as a thumbnail. And once we've done that, we can click update posts. And once that's done, you can see we've now got this laid out. So we can say, well, actually, I want to put date after word count. And I'll put it up between title and category. So I'll do that update my posts we we'll just jump over then to the actual post listing and we'll take a look at what that looks like so as we can see it now gives me my word count we've got categories the date and attachments now at the moment there are no attachments there's nothing's going to show up in there so if we add an attachment to the actual page itself that will then show up in this right hand column so let's just come back and let's just adjust that let's just say well we don't need the attachments on this so I'll just remove that you can also see we get the option to clone things. So let's just say, for example, we wanted to create a duplicate copy. We could easily clone that and then just adjust whatever we need afterwards. But hopefully what you can see is it's quite easy to create custom column listings just to enhance the admin the way you want. Now, this really does come in useful when you start looking at the media library. So let's just jump over to that and take a look at some of the things we can do there. Now, I've got the media library open, so let's just jump over to that tab and take a look. So if we look at the media library in the sort of list view, you can see that it gives us some basic information. It gives us a thumbnail of the image. It gives us the file name, who uploaded it, uh, or who the author is, what is uploaded to, so if it's attached to anything, any comments associated with it and the date that it was uploaded. That's okay, but what if you want more information? What if you want to know what the dimensions of the file are? Well, to do that, you have to click on it and go and take a look at it and edit it. And, and you know, you, it's a bit long-winded. So we can customize that. We can take out some of the unused information like comments in this example and the author, and we can add some information in. There's a lot more useful to us. So let's switch back over to this. Let's just take out the things we don't want. We don't want that. We don't want the author. We don't care about that information. So let's have a look at adding a new column in there. And let's take a look at what we can do. You can see that we've got dimensions. So let's just add that in there. We'll leave everything else set as it was. And uh, let's come in and uh, let's just say that's uh, something else. And uh, we'll come into, well, let's say the full path. So we can say, actually, no, let's say file size. So we know the, the actual size of the file up on the server. So let's just save that a second. Then we'll switch back over and refresh. And we'll see our much more useful media library showing us information that's actually useful to us. So you can see now we've got the dimensions of the file and the actual physical file size on the server. So it's already a lot more useful. If we come back over, let's add another column in there. Let's drop this down. And we'll say, well, we want to have the EXIF data in there. Now, obviously, this is dependent upon if the file that you upload actually has an EXIF data in there. What you can do is you can specify what uh, EXIF data is going to be in there. So you can say, well, what camera was it shot with? What caption? What timestamp? What ISO? Shutter speed? And things like that. So we'll just say, well, we'll just leave the camera on there. And if that information is actually stored in the files we've uploaded, we'll see that in there. So this is great if you're dealing with an art or a photography-based website where this information can be pretty useful to you. So we'll update the media library. We'll jump back over. And we'll just refresh and take a little look at that information. Like I say, it all depended upon whether the file actually has something uploaded to it 
with the EXIF data. And unfortunately, the examples that I've got don't ha actually have anything. But hopefully what you can see is that you can customize the layout of any of the sections inside your admin set, uh, sort of panel that will allow you to get a lot more information that's relevant and useful to you as a content creator or admin or editor, whatever it is that you do. So I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please download the, uh, the, the plugin and give it a try. I'm sure you'll find it very useful. I'm sure you'll find a way of laying things out that's beneficial to you. If you have enjoyed the uh, the tutorial, please hit the subscribe button below. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, a thumbs down if you didn't. If you've got any comments, questions, or feedback on this or any of the other videos on our channel, please pop those in the comment section below. Don't forget to check out wptouch.co.uk for exclusive content. And until next time, take care.